um, who is my sous chef. I can't tell you how excited I am to be here at the Norfolk Senior Center in Norfolk, Massachusetts to do a demonstration on seasonal cooking. But probably the most exciting part is that Eileen is my personal sous chef. I think I'd like to take her home and wrap her up and keep her for a while. I also want to say a big thanks to Norma Shruman, who helped put this together, who's the director of the Senior Center, and to Ruth Leon, who is my camera crew this morning. So welcome, everybody. I'm very excited to be here. So the first thing I want to show you is we, Eileen and I started a little bit early before the group arrives, and we cut up our vegetables for the soup. And the soup is going to be what's called carotene soup. And it's a pretty, pretty platter. Um, the reason I'm taking it out now, it's not quite done. I have butternut squash, I have carrots, and I have onions roasting. And all of that will go into our yummy soup. But I also have separate carrots that are cut up in nickel shapes that we're going to use for our salad later on. And I don't want them to get too well done. I am never, ever a fan of mushy vegetables, except when they go in the soup. Uh, so I'm just going to take my carrots out for now. So these are uh, a favorite cracker I made. My husband is allergic both to yeast and as a vegetarian, soy. Soy is almost in everything pre-made that you can find. These are not the paper, the breads I use for crackers. For him, I have to use tortillas because most of them have either yeast or soy lecithin. And soy lecithin is used as a uh, preservative. So this is my new favorite cracker. If you come to my house for a party, you'll never get a cracker out of a box because I'm always looking at different ways to make a cracker. I have a bumper crop of pesto, of uh, basil this summer, and uh, froze it in ice cube trays and had plenty pesto for the entire season. What I did is I spread the pesto, and this pesto is made with almonds. Um, most pesto, as we know, are made with um, pine nuts, thank you. Um, and because pine nuts repeat on me for some reason, um, I, I go for the almonds, or I also make it with walnuts. Love it with walnuts. And so Eileen was kind enough to shred my Parmesan cheese. I am not a fan of whatever that is in that green can that you buy, and they say it's Parmesan cheese. And I also like to be able to shred my cheese myself. <clears throat> Excuse me, I just feel like I get a little bit fresher feel from it. So I'm going to make a few of these. Uh, I've made it many different ways. You can make a tamponade, which is olives and some tomatoes sun-dried tomatoes and olive oil, all crunched up, and spread it on top of here. You can add, uh, sometimes I just make the pesto crackers without cheese on it. Um, we're having a pretty light lunch, so I don't mind adding a little bit of cheese to it. Okay, we're going to put this into an oven of 425 that we've been using. Do not leave your kitchen. It goes from almost done to totally ruined in seconds. So you really have to keep an eye on it. But it's a great recipe and I think you'll love it. What do you have to heat to? 425. Yep, 425. So you can serve it any ways that you like. You can use a pizza cutter and get a nice, do we have a pizza cutter here? Um, and get a nice straight edge to it. Or sometimes I just crack it by hand, um, or I put it on the tray and I let my guests crack it themselves. I should make the banana pudding, and the recipe is right there. Uh, the vanilla pudding, we add the banana to it. You have to cover it with saran wrap so that you don't get a film on top. Well, here I go again. I don't like to use saran wrap. I think we have enough plastic in our landfill. 
So whenever possible, I use things that are reusable. And that's what this is. This is a silicone cover. You can use this if you use a microwave, you can put it on top. If you need a cover to a pot in the oven, it can go on top. And I like that because sometimes I'm foolish to get something out of the oven and I'll pick the pot up by mistake. Um, these uh, you can cook with. You know, they have the they have cake pans and cupcake pans made out of this material. So that's what I use. Good lunch to me. Honey, thank you. Lunch. So now I'm going to, it says to really stir well the pudding. Now this pudding took me 10 minutes to make. But the only thing I don't want is to, oh, you're asking me if I'm doing it too. No, it's from scratch, Linda. It's from scratch. And it's cornstarch, um, sugar, a little salt, you know. And vanilla. Okay. Oh, and five and five yolks. And does anyone know how to get a yolk out of an egg cleanly? You will with a bottle, a plastic bottle, upside down, you squeeze it on top of the yolk and it pops right up. And we so have roasted butternut squash, carrots, and onions, all of which are continued to be this time. Now unfortunately, this week was the last week of deep winter shares, so I'm going to have to actually purchase elsewhere for this. What I did is, yes, I want to put it in the pan before we put it in. Now, just ask me, what did I put in the pan before I put this in? So, I, I'm showing you what I use at home, and it's called this. It's a silplat, and again, it's that, um, Material similar to that top I have. Uh, what's the word I want to use? Yeah. Silicone. Thank you. And um, this one's pretty old. I've had it for several years. You don't wash it just before uh, because you don't want the soap taste to get in here. And it prevents me from ever having to clean a tray. Um, people do, I have two of them. I have one for savory and one for sweet. So I've never buttered a cookie tray. I will always use my sofa. And what we did here is, I, should, I shouldn't say we, what I mean did was um, uh, shredded off, uh, peeled the butternut squash and seeded it. And I want to show you, and then we cut off the onions. I say all of this. And this will go in a plastic bag in my freezer. Um, and eventually, when I get enough vegetables, mostly onions, carrots, uh, celery is great, um, garlic. Uh, uh, I did put some of the butternut squash in here for sweetness, carrots. And I will put it in a big, huge pot with this much water. And I will cook it for two and a half hours. And this is what you get. This is, I'm going to bring it around for people to smell. Here's my pot. Yeah. I'm going to throw all my vegetables in. They probably come up to here. Right. And then I might have two okay. inches above it. Okay. But oh, it to cover it. Cover the vegetables. Yeah. Cover the vegetables. Right. So you'll get a large amount. Now, if I really want a strong, strong stock, uh, I've been making, uh, again, seasonally, I've been making I mean, French onion soup. And since I don't use beef, I will use a double stock. So I will take this stock with my new vegetables, pour it back in, and redo it. And then you get a really, really rich stock. Uh, I'm going to take my garlic peel out of here. I uh, it doesn't really add a lot of nutrients, but especially the onion. The peel of the onion adds the depth of color. So not anything to eat for it. I'm gonna get over here. Everybody has their own way of opening garlic. Um, I like a little bit of a smash. 
And I also, I have a press. But that sort of hurts my hand to do that so much. So my trusty food processor is one of my best friends. Other than I need my new <laughs> so chef. So I'm not putting too much garlic in here uh, for the soup, but I am doing the garlic now that I'm going to use for my salad. So please help yourself to the crackers. We have another one coming over here. Okay, so I've got my stock in here, my soup, that you can all sort of take a look at. I've got a lot of vegetables in here, and I just added that large container of stock just to the top of it. Yeah. You know, it's sort of hard to see. Oh. Now, I am a lover of spice. Um, most places will say a half a teaspoon. I don't think I even have in my life done anything in a half a teaspoon other than cayenne. But there are a few spices that I want to use in my soup. And um, this one, it calls for a teaspoon of cumin. Cumin is a great spice and it is a smoky flavor to it. And whenever I'm doing a savory dish, which I think this soup, the carotene soup is, uh, I like to add a good amount of the cumin to it. So there you go with one. And another favorite of mine is curry. And it's almost like a little surprise sometimes, because you're not really expecting that hit of curry. It also adds, curry has um, a very nice yellow color to it, so it sort of brightens the color of the soup. So I probably put a couple of teaspoons of each of those in. Now I have a secret ingredient, and it is store-bought. It's called not chicken. It's a bouillon cube. And it's got all good stuff in it. It does have a lot of sodium, so if you are on a low sodium diet, you might want not want to use these. Even though I made a great stock on my own, this just gives you a little extra punch. It's called not chicken because it is a chicken flavored cube, but without the bird. <laughs> what I'm going to do next is start to get our salad together while the stock is cooking, while the soup is cooking over there. And this is a recipe that a friend of mine made for Valentine's Day. And it was a very pretty red. These are all the cranberries I have left. Uh, in October, uh, November, <laughs> December, I buy about six to eight bags of cranberries. And I throw them in the freezer so I have them for the rest of the season. Uh, but unfortunately, it's getting low. But this is enough for today. I think I did a little bit too much garlic. Um, and there's no way I want to lose this garlic, so I will put it in my stock. So, you could make this in a blender. I have this out, so I'm going to use the food processor. And I have about, this one I have to read and get out the glasses. Um, I have to read this one because I'm not used to this. Oh, I have to clean the glasses too. Okay, so it calls for two-thirds cup of olive oil. And this is the one time you actually are going to see me measure. Can I have um, measuring cups? Um, and I have about a half a cup of fresh cranberries and a teaspoon of minced garlic. A teaspoon of salt. Now, I am using kosher salt. I use one of two salts. I use kosher salt and I use sea salt. I do not use iodized salt. To me, it, it's a processed salt that has a very chemical taste to it, and I just don't like it. Um, most cooks will not use that, most of the important chefs. So, um, how much is it? A teaspoon? Yeah, that looks like a teaspoon, right? Okay. And um, a teaspoon of black pepper. And I have 
again, I just sort of eyeball that. Okay. So, uh, four tablespoons of water. Could I have some water? The ice water in there would be good. Um, and two-thirds cup of olive oil. Um, and then the last but not least is, oh, did I forget? Yes. Is the uh, red wine vinegar. And I'm doing about six tablespoons, so I'll do about three of these guys. Well, eyeball it as usual. How was that for measuring? Good. Good. It's all fat. Yeah. I'm very full of this. So. And then I'm just going to. No, put your olive oil in. You didn't put the olive Oh, I didn't. Thank in. you. Thank you. You'll come to the next class, too, and remind me of the same things, please. Thank you. And now we're just going to blend this all together. It comes out to a very pretty color. And as I said, it was served on Valentine's Day, a lunch that I went to. It was very pretty on the salad. Well, I am not a fan of mushy vegetables. This one will be because we're going to put it in the processor. Um, or the blender. Can we get the blender out? Do we have a big blender? Oh, it's going to be better. Um, uh, because it's the stock that takes a long time. The stock takes two, two and a half hours to make. But what you're putting into it, if you are cooking a vegetable soup for an hour and a half, you're going to come out with mush. So really check often as you're cooking your soups to make sure that um, your, your vegetables still have a little bite to them. Um, this is a different kind of soup because it's going to be a puree. So the vegetables are going to be much softer. Now I'm going to check this again. We're boiling, so I'm going to actually come in. I think we're just about ready um, with this guy. And I'm going to take a little taste and see if we're ready yet. I taste a little more salt, but I want more. I am a huge fan of cabbage. Anybody ever go on a diet? Like everybody. Yeah. Um, when I'm dieting, I just love to be able to have cabbage. It's, I can have it raw, I like it cooked. It's a sweetness to it, it moves my mouth a lot, I get exercise chewing, and it's very filling. It also has a slightly difficult side effect. <laughs> um, it doesn't bother me. Oh. Cabbage does not bother me that way. Um, neither do beans. But um, Brenda has eaten in my house, and she knows you can eat beans in my house and you will never have gas because I always make them from scratch. The enzyme that beans have when they're cooked, you know how the, um, when you open the can, it's sort of slimy in there, um, and that is the enzyme that it's been uh, from the bean when it's cooked. That enzyme is what causes gas. So I, when I make my beans, after I'm all done, I get rid of all the liquid, and it goes right back into the freezer in um, little containers. And I have tons. If you open my freezer right now, the entire top tray is filled with different types of beans. Uh, that I use. Uh, beans is a big staple of my vegetarian cooking. Done. Okay, so I have put in, in the food processor, a uh, single blade to be able to slice it. So I could do it by hand, but I love being able to use tools. <laughs> and I'm just going to keep putting these in. Can you, um, I mean, do you mind cutting that guy up for me? And don't forget to leave the ends of it for the chickens. Who knows what this is? It's a daikon ranch. And we're going to have that in our salad. A cyclone? Not cyclone, Thelma. Daikon. Daikon ranch. And it is a vegetable that is grown in the fall. It's a cold season vegetable. It's a root vegetable. And it winters over beautifully. 
Now, um, Eileen is going to be kind enough to cut up little ones of this for each of you to taste. And you'll find it's a little bit bitter. When, um, when you cook a radish, any kind of radish, it caramelizes and it will have a sweetness. So this will be, this radish will be in our salad um, and it will taste like a sweet water chestnut. It will still have a little bite of Christmas to, Christmas to it, but it will no longer be bitter. So we're almost done with these guys. Right now, I'm going to fry up the daikon radish. Uh, I'm going to put a little bit of butter in here. You know, fat is fat. So uh, the only thing I never use is vegetable oil because it is soy oil. So anything that you see, and you know, there's a lot of concerns about soy with women as we get older with how it affects estrogen in our body and uh, uh, breast cancer, things like that. So, and also soy is genetically modified. There is no pure soy. It all has been reconstituted genetically. So I try to stay away from it. Yes. Is canola oil? Canola oil is fine. What's the vegetable oil? It's vegetable oil is soy oil. So any any you know, if you look at the ingredients on what you're purchasing in a box, it's gonna say vegetable oil. Please know that soy. The carotene soup, I want to talk about that. The reason I call it carotene soup is it has vegetables that are very high in beta carotene. Beta carotene is a vitamin that is very important. It helps, and I'm cheating from my notes here, uh, it's vitamin A. And it is found in the pigment of vegetables, especially our red, orange vegetables. Um, it's a great source. Um, from your vegetables and what happens is once you, the vegetables are dissolved in your digestive system, the liver then turns it into vitamin A. Vitamin A is important for eyesight. We all grew up saying eat your carrots otherwise you won't be able to see when you're older. Uh, it also, so it improves vision. It also helps with skin ailments such as psoriasis and eczema. Um, and the other thing is they find that it helps with cell propagation and that it's an antioxidant. So they say it helps with um, heart and um, it, it boosts immune system to prevent cancer and heart disease. So that's my shtick about um, beta carotene. So now what we're going to do, because we don't have a big blender, we're going to put the soup in this and plug it in and we're ready to go. Here we go, we're starting to have soup, ladies. And because it's sort of small, we're going to have to do this in batches. Um, it sort of reminds me of, um, I was lucky enough, my husband, daughter, and I went over to Ireland, and I never had a meal without a soup. Um, it was in October, so, and they're big with the root vegetables over there. And they don't do a lot of importing of foods into Ireland. They try to be pretty self-sufficient. And I think that's why they get a bad rap for um, their uh, lack of creativity in uh, their foods, although I ate very well when I was over there. But um, every soup is pureed. Never had a soup in Ireland that wasn't pureed. So ladies, you don't need teeth for this soup. <laughs> so I'm just finishing up um, putting all of our soup in batches and getting that nice and pureed. Over here is another winter vegetable that I get locally at Tangerines, and it's arugula. And arugula is, if you want to give each person a little bite. For those that don't know arugula, 
It is a lettuce family, and it is spicy. It has a little kick to it, um, and I, I am in love with arugula. First of all, I love the shape. I think it's very beautiful. So I use this. I use tat soy, T-A-T-S-O-I, which is a, uh, it looks like baby spinach. And it looks, smells, tastes, and cooks like baby spinach, but it has a little bit, I think, even sweeter taste than the spinach. And um, that grows to 15 degrees Fahrenheit. So in a greenhouse, it grows beautifully right now, along with the kale and arugula and spinach. To this um, arugula, I'm going to add our cabbage on top. <sighs> Thanks, Beth. You are now my sous chef. And for a little color, I'm going to add roasted carrots, again, from a local farm. And that's how our salad's going to look. You're going to add your dressing yourself to it. And that's our cranberry dressing over there. Are you ready, ladies? Um, we're going to have the squash soup. Oh, you can't have that messy. And a little dollop of sour cream on top. And for texture and crunch, some pepitos. These are dry roasted pumpkin seeds. Mm. And um, it adds a nice crunch. And this will be your soup. And then you will have your salad. I'm still looking. Or a big four spoons of scoop out with it with this. So this will be our salad. These delicious, excuse me? Where do the radishes go? Oh, thank you. The radishes. Smell that out. Perfect. And the radishes are going to go right on top of the salad. Get a couple of radishes, and there's your salad with your cranberry dressing. And voila! Lunch will be served, and in a few moments, you'll see your dessert. But you gotta eat this first. Oh, Thank you, ladies, and enjoy lunch. Um, I made this last night, and I couldn't do it here because it takes 10 minutes to make but four hours to refrigerate. And this is homemade vanilla pudding that earlier you saw me add bananas to. And it really is very easy. It does take 10 minutes, but you gotta stay there and you have to be stirring a lot. But it's very easy. Well, I hope that everybody had a good lunch today. We had carotene soup. We had winter salad and topped it off with banana vanilla uh, pudding. Anyhow, had a great day cooking and talking, two of my favorite activities. Um, I have a cookbook here that I published a couple of years ago. It, uh, I actually started it because I couldn't find my grandmother or my mother's recipes, and I was heartbroken. So what I did is I decided to put it on the computer, and as I did so, I really enjoyed being able to talk about my relationships with them. So then I expanded my recipes to include those of friends, other friends and family. I take everybody's favorite recipe and I make it vegetarian. It's called Good Food for Everyone and profits of this go to our local food pantry. I am a big believer that no matter what, everybody should have access to good food. I think it is the cornerstone of health and happiness. So um, I really hope that you all enjoyed the meal today. I will be having a follow-up next month, and I uh, hope you'll come back for another lunch and time with Tina. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.